Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, to a special edition of your favorite podcaster's favorite podcast. It is Legend in My Spare Time. I am your host, Matt Lees. Thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure that you follow me at Legend Podcast. I'm really happy to present this episode to you, the special conversation I got to have with the one and only Ben Blood, who is, of course, currently a defenseman playing at number 77 for your Cardiff Devils. We talked about his career getting started. We talked about his transition into the European leagues. We talked about what he loves about Cardiff. Make sure you follow him at BennyBlood24 on Twitter and on Instagram. Really cool profile, really interactive with his fans, and uh, it's really awesome to get to talk to him. So here it is, my talk with Ben Blood from your Cardiff Devils. I'm Matt Lees. Hit subscribe, hit like. We'll see you next time. What's the one thing all great teams have in common? Great coaching. Don't try to suck up to me, everyone. Defense. Legend in My Spare Time contains themes and subjects that may not be suitable for everyone listening. If you're easily offended, we suggest you get your podcast on elsewhere. Legend in My Spare Time! Perfect. Dude, thank you so much for doing this, first off. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, I checked out some of your vlogs just to kind of get an idea, and as soon as I saw the, <laughs> as soon as I saw the Ninja Turtle towel, I was like, "We're good. We're gonna be fine." Yeah, I still got it. It's in my, it's in my bathroom here in my flat. It takes, it goes everywhere with you. Goes everywhere with me. Uh, the beach, the pool, Cardiff, the lake, cabin, everywhere. You know, one day you're going to be able to look back at that towel and be like, I took this thing some some crazy places, and, and, and it's time. If that towel could talk. Yeah. I don't know if we'd want to hear that on a podcast, though. <laughs> yeah, some of it might not be appropriate. No, definitely not. Do you remember your first moment when you first fell in love with hockey? Um, shoot, I don't know. My, my first memories with hockey are just going to public skate at new hope ice arena in, in minnesota with my my older sister and my dad right and then uh, i don't know skating on it i was lucky right down the street one of my buddies that i played hockey with growing up lived on a pond and then in the winter time his dad would make a rink and like cut the ice and mm -hmm. we would go there and spend full weekends at this guy's place like just come in to eat and and maybe warm up, yeah. drink some fluids, but we were out there all day. That was a lot of fun. And that's a huge advantage that like people who live here, for example, could never comprehend having a rink down the down the down the street. Um, but so many players like yourself, you hear them talk about their history, and it's always like, oh yeah, we had a we had a rink down the street, or my dad would make one in the backyard. It's that sort of underlying advantage that you guys had of, of course as well as the love of the game but you had that advantage of like there's a rink right there we can literally play all weekend yeah there's rinks everywhere growing up there was shoot there was like four rinks like actual rinks um just in my hometown in plymouth there might be more now yeah um but and then there's out there's a bunch of outdoor rinks really close and it was it was really easy to find ice time yeah and i imagine fairly young then like was there you start playing obviously with your buddies and everything but is there a point where you you start to realize that you're you're actually pretty pretty darn good at this thing um i i actually didn't feel like i was good at hockey until like I was my second year of Bantams. I almost, after my first year of Bantams, I, oh shoot, how old was I? Bantams was like eighth grade and ninth grade. So like, I don't know, like 15, 14, but I almost quit. I wanted to quit and just snowboard with my buddies because <laughs> I loved, I loved snowboarding and all my buddies were, were snowboarding all winter and I was missing out on that. My parents were like, just give it one more year. 
And if you don't like it, then you can hang them up um, and snowboard. But just give us one more year. I was like, fine. And then after that year, I was, I made it to, I had a really good season in my second year at Bantams. And the team was like, okay, you got to try out for selects for Minnesota, which is like a national deal. And so I tried out for that and I made it. And then I made it all the way to like, the national selects for under 15s and then then i ended up going to shattuck that fall and i was around really good players who were really motivated and just wanted to get better and i was in the right environment and i don't know it took off from there but but i didn't feel good at hockey until like i was 15 or 16 i guess and even then like i don't know but I bet that's when your parents were like, thank goodness. Yeah, they were like, they were just happy to see me like, uh, I don't know, working hard at something and putting, um, I don't know, my effort into something that could like open some doors for me, like in, with college and scholarships and yeah, things like that. Very cool. Now, uh, during your history, I mean, obviously... Uh, everything. If, if people look up, look you up, read about you. Always a very positive attitude. You, that that lifestyle of uh, you. You obviously have to sacrifice a lot too, right? Obviously, you say your buddies when you know they're going snow, uh, they're going snowboarding, but you had to work at hockey. Um, do, you, do you sort of feel a payoff now for yourself because you, you've kind of earned the life you've you've got yourself as a professional player? Um, uh, yeah. There's a lot of sacrifices that come come with it, you know. Um, and definitely, I'm happy with with my decisions and my, the sacrifices I've made to get here for sure. It's, I think it's paying off. I also think I'm, I'm really lucky to still be playing and get to do this as a job. So, um, everything's worked out really great. I couldn't be, I mean, it's, I'm super thankful. Yeah. And that, that definitely comes across, like I said, the positivity, the, the, the being thankful. But uh, if you look yourself, uh, obviously, if you look you up on YouTube, you're also not afraid to tussle and throw down if you need to. Um, so that's something that everybody must love about hockey. It's such a it's such from an outward view. It's such a wild thing that in a sport you can just throw down and have fisticuffs all of a sudden. But man, do the crowds love it. And I, I bet the players love it, too, to just let that steam off. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I didn't come here to fight. I, I don't. No, of course, no. I of don't course. label myself a fighter. Yeah. I, I, but I'm a really competitive guy, and of course, games get really competitive. And then, I mean, if guys are fired up enough, then fights happen, and it's part of the game. But I mean, I didn't. I don't go looking for fights. I, I don't. I hope I don't fight this whole season. I mean, no, of course, yeah. I want to play yeah. hockey and. Mm-hmm. And help the team win, and if I'm in the penalty box, I can't do that. So, how how long have you been in Cardiff now? The last week of July. Right. So still still really fresh. How are you settling in uh, in in the Cardiff Bay there? I love it. I live right in the bay. I love being by the water. I got a lot of water around me back home in Minnesota, where I live in the summertime. Yeah. Um, I like the the vibes and the energy of just being around water. It's like peaceful. And, um, I love my flat. I got a really nice apartment that the team, uh, hooked me up with. Um, I got everything I need. Like I'm, everything's close. Downtown is close. The arena is close. I got teammates that live in my building, teammates that live in the building next to mine. Like they've done a really good job of taking care of me. I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, and I mean, as a fan in the stands, that you always hear uh, on Twitter from all the the Devils players how great the management is and how much of a great vibe and everything is that you know how it is there. But it, it comes across on the ice uh, as well. I mean, it's crystal clear because you guys play with the same uh, attitudes, positivity wise, uh, when you're you know when you're playing in the the Champions League. Um, uh, admittedly against a maybe a stronger team at that time or when you're you're, you're dusting somebody 9-1 such a cool atmosphere as a fan to watch uh you know you guys play with that respect is that something that andrew lord puts into you guys or is that just something instinctively that you do as hockey players um yeah lordo's a great guy he's a positive energy guy he's an energy guy like he's he's so passionate it's easy to 
And like energy is contagious. Like we talk about that in the locker room all the time. Like energy is contagious. Like, and, and so everyone just, I mean, tries to bring happy, positive, energetic vibes to the room. And then it just like spreads so easily. It's so easy. And like you were saying with just like the front office, like all these guys are, guys and girls are, are, they have like good hearts, good souls. Like it's fun to, it's like a family atmosphere at the rink. I love it. It's awesome. Everyone has personality. It's never boring, like smiling faces at the arena. It's, it's, I feel really lucky to be here and be a part of it. You know, it's like, there's such a positive attitude for everyone. Uh, even the fans of other teams, everybody gets along really well and that's i think that's what i love most about hockey is that you know you're not going to get smacked in the face for wearing the wrong jersey in the crowd you know like some other sports around here that we won't name and shame <laughs> yeah definitely the fans have been great so far i love it i get night so nine one on the weekend and also we, we have to say uh saturday a great performance as well and uh man of the match saturday is that right <laughs> Yeah, and I honestly think there was a mistake because I'm pretty sure I was minus one. Like, I didn't have an assist or a goal. Like, I don't know why they chose me, but... Uh, Take it when you can, right? Someone liked, someone liked my game and, and decided to choose me for that. Yeah, uh, and then, obviously, like, the, the next night, uh, a 9-1 victory. Uh, what's that like in the locker room compared to what it's like uh, in, the, you know, in, the, in the Champions League when you're, say, trailing in a game? Um, I would say it's, it's harder to stay focused in those nine, one games than it is when you're in a tight game against burn. Like, right. Those games, those champions league games are so fun. They're so competitive. It's fun to play against good teams and good players. And, and so for me, that makes it easier to like perform and, and stay in it. It's, it's harder to stay focused when, you know, you're just buzzing a team. And it's what, like, it was like 6-1 after the first period? Like, Yeah, it's, and my wife said we were watching it on the TV that night. My wife looked at me, she's like, well, this one's over then. <laughs> if I mentioned to you Jack in the Box, um, is that a move uh, hockey-wise that you're familiar with, or is that something a commentator made up on one of your, uh, on one of your clips, Jack in the Box? <laughs> I, rem- I remember that play, playing St. Cloud in college. I had never heard of that before. I would just call it a reverse check. Right. But. That's going to have an elbow. elbowing call coming up on Ben Blood. That was the jack in the box. I'll explain what that is right now. When you're going in to the into the corner and you're the first one in, there's a guy behind you Here's another looking look for the puck. It. You put on the brakes and hit him when he doesn't have the puck. There it is. Jack in the box. <laughs> Bembo smiling. He like why like that play? Does he is he proud of uh, pulling off the jack in the box? <laughs> I guess so. I, Do you happen to remember that, what you said the, to the guy after after he hit the ground? Because it looked like you leaned down and said something to him. Um, I don't remember word for word. I think I was like, "Stand your feet, go grab your stick" or something. I don't right. know. Yeah, because uh, he lost his stick. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Now. Yeah, it, it did seem uh, like a, a very low clip. It's just funny that the, the, the commentator was so proud of himself naming it the Jack in the Box. I was just curious if that was an actual uh, hockey term or if this dude was just kind of going into a business for himself, as it were. I don't know if it's a hockey term. I think Isn't it Jack in the Box, the toy that you just like crank it and then it surprises you? Yeah, yeah, that was the toy, but I didn't know whether it was also a, a hockey thing. Uh, you know, just, just one of those things that people who don't play the sport uh, think are real. You know, for example, like a flying V. Uh, in reality, probably not a very smart hockey move, but in movies, it's like no. you can't beat the Flying V, man. Same with, and I don't want to badmouth Charlie Conway or, or Gordon Bombay for that matter, but the trick Triple Deke, what's the point of all those switches if you're just going to stop and aim your shot anyway? I, I don't know. I, I know. That's that's Hollywood, though. That's, that's Yeah. I mean, I love those movies. Don't get movies. me wrong. I wear a replica Ducks jersey to every Cardiff game I go to. Um, but uh, if, you, if you really start picking at these things, it's, you know, it's uh, it's not going to last so long, is it? Yeah, I mean, that's Hollywood. There's a lot of cheesy stuff in those movies. If you, if you're paying attention, that don't really make sense. If you know, like, 
anything about hockey. But yeah, it must be yeah because great um, movies though tough to criticize those. But. Yeah, yeah, you got you can't really you know you're a nostalgia guy like me. You can't pull at too many threads. You just kind of have to let some things go and let them be. Because uh, I love those movies. Yeah, absolutely. Is there something you miss most about uh, uh, about being in America? Is there like one thing that obviously everyone always says family, which is obviously the the correct answer but is there one other thing that you miss most about america oh i miss these restaurants that i go to in the summertime when i'm home all my favorite spots yeah i miss the food yeah the foods that when, when my wife and i talk about living in canada versus living here it's always food um and i would bet that they're very different lists like our, our my food list and your food list are going to be strikingly different but for me, it's like it's Arby's and it's it's chicken wings. You know, that's what I miss the most: chicken wings. Yeah, I like wings. I don't have them that much anymore. I we had wings a lot when we were in like college and the few years after. But I don't know. I there's this franchise called Devani's back home. It's like local in Minnesota. They have these hot sandwiches. They, they're called hoagies. There's a buffalo chicken one that I love. I'm always at Devani's. I'm always at this restaurant called Wakame. Uh, it's a sushi place. So good. Yeah. Rusty taco. Like, I miss all this stuff. Yeah, it's all it's food I though. Get it first, when I get home. And as a as someone who's lived in Wales for many years now, my warning to you is: if you see buffalo chicken on a menu, it's not buffalo chicken. I just want to save you the heartbreak of that what sad. Is it? It, it they call it buffalo chicken, but the sauce is not buffalo chicken. Buffalo sauce, like you know, when you get buffalo wings back home uh there it's not the same kind of sauce but they call it buffalo wings buffalo sauce and it's like come on man that's not you know just call it something different but it's not what you're expecting and it's very disappointing yeah well thank you for the heads up i got your back my friend no worries um now you eat very 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 healthy uh you mentioned in uh one of the clips i watched because i do research that's how we do it here i guess uh you don't often eat the junk food, the treats, but when you do, what is that? What's that thing you reach for? Is it like a Mars bar? Is it a, is it a Twix? Is there one? Uh, if I'm cheating, uh, honestly, like I don't, I don't like to eat sugar. My body is like, if I have sugar, if I had like a donut right now today, like tomorrow at this time, I would just, that's all I would want is a donut. Like it's so addictive to me. Right. And so if, if I am, I'm eating like dark chocolate or like, I don't know. You're trying to try there's to be a, as healthy as possible. A, what? You're trying to be as healthy as possible. I try to, but I fall off the map sometimes. There's like a muffin place in the mall downtown. I go get these like they have like gluten free vegan muffins. So I I tell myself that they're not so bad for me, but I'm not perfect just like everyone else. Like Yeah. But I mean I guess as as an athlete, that's kinda looking after your body is kinda half of the game, right? So yeah, if if I'm eating junk, like I feel like junk, like it's it's pretty obvious to me. Like mm. if I'm eating green and eating vegetables and clean, like I'm feeling way better. So I I try to do that as much as I can. Usually towards the end of the week, I'm I'm pretty dialed in with what I eat with the games coming up, and then on game day and you know on off days, I let it go a little bit, but. But overall, you try to maintain that discipline, which is, you know, foremost in any professional athlete. I think so, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, do you find it tough when you kind of because you you know you get used to a place and then you got to move on? Um. I, I find I would really struggle with simple stuff like finding the local grocery store. Uh, is that usually something maybe the teammates jump in and kind of kind of lead your way with that stuff? Yeah, the the boys and the team helped me out when I got here. I think the first grocery store I went to was Morrison's. Morrison's is the name, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go to Asda now, right by the arena. I always see the boys there, too. I think we all go there. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, in Finland, I had my, my grocery store and my restaurants that I like to eat at if I was sick of cooking. Um but I've been I've been pretty good here at finding. I mean, I, I it's just so easy to go to Asda. It's right by the arena. Like that's my spot. That's where I'll, I'll probably get groceries the whole time I'm here. And then yeah. there's like a really healthy place called Bean Freaks downtown that I like. That has lots of like 
whole foods like quality organic yeah type stuff yeah yeah it's, but uh, otherwise i don't know very many restaurants here like i go to i like tortilla they got a good burrito and tacos downtown mm-hmm. but otherwise like i don't <laughs> i don't know restaurants to to eat out at here it's hard to know what you're into what you're not into and um especially in a new place you know yeah i'll figure it out and and plus like i feel like all the restaurants are downtown and it's always if i'm going downtown i always got to pay to park and like yeah i don't know Uh, yeah it's 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 a lot of work it's a lot of effort to put in uh do you have tim hortons in minnesota yeah we do i'm i'm honestly not a coffee guy though no i try to stay away from it it's my body well like i like coffee i like the taste of it yeah but my body's so sensitive to caffeine that if I'll just have a little, a few sips of coffee and I'm like bug eyed and shaking and like, oh, yeah, it's... bouncing off the walls. So I only, I'll have like a shot of espresso rarely if I'm like really grinding, really tired. Mm. Coffee is my one thing that I, I drink way too much of, but that, that's, that's my one thing. Yeah. Was... Whatever works for you, you know, I, I'm, a lot of people are the same way. Yeah especially playing in a place like Finland, you mentioned on one of your videos, you, you can't watch the, the TV there because it's in obviously another language you don't understand. What do you watch to kind of keep yourself entertained? What are your, what are your TV shows and movies that you're into when you, when you have your free time? Oh, I'm, I'm straight Netflix. I don't have cable here in Cardiff. I didn't have, I guess I had basic cable in Finland, but it was all in Finnish. So I yeah. never watched it. I've, I've been straight Netflix for, like five years now and in the summertime I, I don't even like where i stay in the summertime me and my roommate we don't even watch tv if we watch something it's like a a movie here or there like a random tv show we like we don't have cable there either it's just right. been netflix and i love animation movies i've the only movies i've watched i honestly just got a tv like last week i didn't have a tv for like over a month here right and and i didn't have wi-fi till like the week before that so i was just i don't know hanging out on my phone like yeah. but i feel like i was always out doing some getting something for my place and pretty busy getting set up with like insurance numbers and like getting set up at a local doctor like there's all this stuff that i needed to do but yeah as far as watching something i've i don't know i watched how to train your dragon a couple times i honestly watch stuff over and over again and then i'll go to the next thing i watch guardians of the galaxy i love those movies yeah one of those is on netflix i've probably watched it four times since i got my yeah i always and then i always put like if i'm just around the house i'll put like friends on in the background yeah uh my wife and i rotate friends and seinfeld uh, and we just kind of worked our way through the box sets. I was never a Seinfeld guy. No, we were, we were, we always watched Friends growing up. It was like the Thursday night lineup on ABC or NBC, whatever it was, and we would watch like it was like Will and Grace, Friends, and like ER, and like maybe there was one other show in there. Yeah, Friends but stays we funny too, Friends though. Every Thursday. Yeah, and it stays funny even now, doesn't it? That, that we find. Oh, it. it's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's timeless. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and something like a Seinfeld, a lot of those, they, they aren't timeless. Uh, and we also love, uh, animated movies. Uh, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I, I love, love animated movies. I think my top one movie all time right now is Storks. Storks. And see, that's one I haven't even seen. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. Now is it? I love that one. And then Lego movie. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I love Lego movie and then I and then I found the the Batman Lego movie so I was watching that last season over and over again it's so funny. Yeah, uh do you, what about that uh did you ever see that movie Sausage Party? I did. I wasn't that into it. It, no. it was like too much for me. It was too too uh it sounds like a dirty joke but too in your face, right? Like Yeah, it was I mean, I my sense of humor is super inappropriate and like but like that was like a whole nother level. I yeah. was just like, wow, okay. Like Yeah, we we ended up turning that one that one off. Um do you dig all the superhero movies or you just kinda watch them as they, you know uh, superhero movies? Yeah. I love Batman. Yeah. Is your pillow still with you? 
Yeah, oh yeah, I take my, my Batman pillow everywhere too. Um, I was, I even took it on the road last year in Finland for the hotel. Um, yeah, I take that guy everywhere. I, I'm, I mean, I'm nostalgic. It's, yeah, it's a part of me, and I, and I love all the Batman movies. My favorite one is one with Bane, Dark Knight Rises. That one was, yeah. Do you like? I love them all, though. Do you like Affleck as Batman? No, no. I didn't think it was good. Is it? Is it that I he wasn't good, or is it those movies are ter- uh, those movies are terrible? Um, I don't know. I just didn't like Affleck as as Batman. It was it wasn't the same. It yeah. wasn't the same to me. It was like empty. I don't know. It wasn't. Hmm. I didn't enjoy it. Now I don't know if you're into uh, comic books at all, but they did a crossover with Batman and the Ninja Turtles in the same comic book, and it was dope. I've never the only comics I ever read was like I think the Sunday comics back home because they were like in color and like my parents always had a newspaper right, out yeah. and like I would read like Garfield and Peanuts and then actually I remember renting a few Calvin and Hobbes books from the library right but if you remember that comic but otherwise Definitely. I never I was never into like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics or like Batman comics. Those. It was was it the cartoons more for you for Turtles? Is that where it, where it got you? It was the movies. I right. remember watching the mo- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies when I was little. Like, like they were like the real ones. It yeah. was like yeah. Um, and and I just got super into it. I had all the action figures, like the bike and lunchbox, the towel, like the clothes, the bedspread, like. Yeah, the lamp, like everything. Yeah, I think we all did. I'm only a few years older than you. I think we all Ninja Turtles was our thing, uh, and it went. It just went everywhere, and that was before like internet uh, and the ability to share things so quickly. But Ninja Turtles was on fire, and it was everywhere. Yeah. And it was. I had all the the toys too. I'm nostalgic too. I still have toys from my childhood displayed in, in our home. Um, that's sort of my nostalgia thing. But, yeah, that's uh, awesome. You got to keep that stuff around if it makes you feel good. That's yeah. Good. I mean, when I left, when I left Canada, I left with like just kind of like the the, the the some clothes in a bag, but I also stuffed in all my old WWF wrestlers, the old, the rest of the figures from the eighties, and I stuffed them all in the hockey size bag, and that's what I flew home with. So you know, when they check your bag, they kind of look at me as all these clothes and just random wrestling figures. Uh, there's a grown ass man standing across from them, but you got to do you. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't into like the wrestling. My buddies were, but I never got into wrestling. I don't know why. It was I just wasn't into it. Well, you were busy becoming a professional athlete. You know, you had you had other things to to do. While the rest of us sat around and watched way too much TV. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Maybe you're right. Uh, there was one question I did want to ask. When you have teams uh, in other languages, obviously the players are always going to be really cool and look after you. Uh, but if they ever messed with you, like language-wise, when you've asked them for a translation, have they ever given you like an embarrassing one for you to say to someone as opposed to the to the real answer? I actually, I, I was skeptical about that, and but I, I got really lucky. I had really good teammates in Norway and Finland. They were, they all treated me really well, and we're so helpful with things and translations. So not that I know of, I mean, there might, there might've been huge jokes that played out the whole year behind my back that I just never knew. <laughs> yeah. You but, just never had an idea, but probably it sounds like probably not. It sounds like it's not that kind of atmosphere in a hockey locker room, which is, which is nice. No. Cause then like you, if, if that's tapping, then you're kind of like abusing trust and yeah. Yeah. And that's a big thing like that. I was, I was really lucky. I loved all my teammates. They were really helpful living in a, in a totally different culture, like different language. So I was lucky. Yeah. And now you're in Wales with uh, mostly Canadian boys. So that must feel uh, oddly familiar and comforting for you. Yeah, it was, it honestly was an adjustment coming into this locker room and like, because now I'm like, I, I'm a part of all these conversations. Like in Finland and Norway, it was like, I was kind of like, the only time I was in conversations was like directly with guys, like open conversations throughout the room. Like I wasn't a part of those because they were all in Finnish or Norwegian. And like, and so here it was, it was different. And at first, but um, 
you know, I loved it and it's been great ever since. It's nice to speak English and know what everyone's thinking and saying and being on the same page. It definitely makes a difference. That's great. Um, and again, you're, you're a most welcome uh, from the fans as well, because you, you seem from on the ice as well to, to a fit right in. So that's really cool. Yeah. The fans have been great. Everyone's welcomed me with open arms. So it's, I mean, it's, I'm really thankful to be here and be a part of this. Yeah, and we're hope, we hope you're here for many years to come. Yeah, you know, it's early in the season, but I'm having a great time. And, um, you know, it's a long season. We're taking it one game at a time, but I'm for sure happy and thankful to be here. Yeah, I mean, we have the, we have the calendar with the team uh, with the fixtures on it, and you guys really do play a lot of games. Uh, is that unique to this league here, or is that sort of how it's always been in your career? Um, in Finland, we played like 60 games and then playoffs. Um, I don't know. I'm used to playing games, but here we have the Champions League too, and like, I don't know. We're 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 ready and we're prepared to play as many games as we need to to win win everything. So definitely. Well, hey, listen, thank you so much. Uh, you got to get those vlogs going again. You live in a beautiful Cardiff Bay now. You got a lot that you can uh, put your vlogs up with. I know, I know. I didn't have Wi-Fi for the longest time, and then now I got it, and I'm kind of getting getting ready for school. I got to squeeze one in here, though, for the people before school gets buzzing. Yeah. Uh, so send out a message to to, to uh, my, the listeners of this podcast. Uh a message you want to leave them with or the fans of the devils um, to close off. Dev nation, dev fans. Thanks for welcoming me with open arms. I've loved it. It's been a fun ride so far. I'm excited for, for our journey this year together. And thank you for all the support. Um, I appreciate it. The boys appreciate it. We definitely hear you when we're on the ice and you make a difference. We love you guys. The support has been great. and um, We'll see you this weekend. All so, right. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, man. We're going to be at the game Saturday, so uh, kick some ass. I'll be the dude in the fucking rad Mighty Ducks jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you once again to Ben Blood, Benny24 on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Legend Podcast on Twitter. My name is Matt Lees. We'll see you at the Ice Arena, Wales. Thanks for listening. See you next time.